Lisa, thank you so much for agreeing to talk with us. This is like such a huge uh, opportunity for us. Uh, uh, really, I'm, I'm very touched. So thank you very much for that. Oh, well, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, so uh, the reason that we're talking is because uh, you have a new album out, Lullaby Girl, and Rainbow Connection is one of the songs that you cover on, on that album. Um, and I do want to talk about that. But before we get to it, uh, I understand that you're a pretty big Muppet fan. Is that right? I am a big Muppets fan, and I married a big Muppets fan. That's good. In fact, yeah. For our wedding, we um, uh, most of your listeners probably know this, but you know, over at, at FAO Schwartz, they have um, the whatnot, the whatnot factory that makes Muppets, and so we had Muppets made for ourselves, for our, that people could pose with. Um, if they couldn't find us, they could pose with the Muppets. And it was really cool too because when you get when you get one made, you can only have, especially for my husband, you could only have like a beard or hair on the top of his head, but he has both. So at his at the um, the place where he works, he works at Conan O'Brien, and I don't remember if it was the hair and makeup or the props department. They helped him. They they secretly gave him a beard and hair, and then what they really secretly did was they took off the generic clothes that you can buy. Um, at FAO Schwartz, and they created our own wedding outfits that perfectly matched what we wore at our wedding. I had a light pink dress that was short in the front and long in the back with a jeweled belt, um, like a little clasp in the front, and he had a special tuxedo, and it, they, our clothes exactly match what we wore at our wedding. And now, since we have two kids, as each kid came along, we got a Muppet made for each of them. Oh, that's great. So you've got like a whole Muppet family now. We do. We really do. That's awesome. I love that. Um, do you, uh, what are what are some of your earliest memories of, of just being a Muppet fan? Like, did you grow up with the Muppets or with Sesame Street? And yeah, like I grew up with the I, I grew up with the early Sesame Street. I was born in, in 1968, so I grew up with the Sesame Street as it was starting out, mm-hmm. and it was kind of the perfect time. It totally influenced everything I do in life, um, especially with all the family friendly music I've been making. I just loved watching like Grover and the restaurant where they'd get a fly in their soup or, you know, Ernie and Bert and the ice, uh, Ernie at the ice cream truck getting all the flavors but getting them upside down. Um, and I, I watched those shows over and over again and the sense of humor um, and the parody that was, it was really sophisticated but also silly and it had a lot of heart and I loved it so much and I loved the Muppets. And then, of course, I watched the Muppet show, um, a variety show that was really for grown-ups but also for kids. And I, I always had a, uh, I love for Miss Piggy, but I, and you know, in retrospect, I think it's more because she was the color pink. I didn't mm-hmm. love her attitude, but I loved satin and pearls and all that girly stuff that was sort of over the top for Miss Piggy. Um, and of course, Kermie, I love Kermie and Gonzo and Fozzie and and all those movies. You know, like I just that was what I grew up on. Those were, and they were so well mixed in with the grown ups of the entertainment. Um, you know, what we'd watch on TV and listen to that it, I just, I love that combination of, um, you know, being able to hit the sophistication and uh, um, the smarts that, that the Muppets have and the heart that they have. And then just great songs, you know, um, which is why I covered Rainbow Connection on one of my, on my new record. That's awesome. Um, do you, do, uh, do you still like revisit that old Muppet stuff now as an adult or with your kids? I do. I do revisit it and it, and it really stands up, you know, um, I, I love things from my past. It's sort of is a time machine for me. But also now I have kids, so we like to share that stuff with my kids. It's funny. I remember playing, especially for my daughter, who's almost who's eight now, and um, which was a couple years ago. We would play her a lot of the Muppet shows because we have them on um, DVD. I was thinking we had them on VCR, but I think we have them on DVD. <laughs> yeah. And um, she was like, "Oh, Florence Henderson, she's beautiful," you know. But they're like, they're from a long time ago, so. But, you know, they still stand up. They still seem like you could watch them today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you uh, – so do you, would you say The Muppet Show is, like, your, your be-all, end-all, like, favorite Muppet thing ever? Um, I mean, is Sesame Street considered Muppet? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. They are Muppet. Yeah. I, I think the early Sesame Street really is a thing, like, a loaf of bread, like, this is your life. And I, I just – those little skits and everything in there. I, I do love The Muppet Show. Um, it does remind me a little bit of having to do homework after school, but, um, and also the first Muppet movie I, I really love. I just, it's a, it's a bit lengthy, but, um, 
but but I do love that movie also. Absolutely, yeah. It's still and it still holds up today. Um, it's such a wonderful film. Uh, yeah, it's funny. I was looking through my stuff back in Dallas uh, recently from when I was a kid. I packed up some stuff and I found my Miss Piggy like enamel brooch. I found and I found some like Muppets shoelaces <laughs> and uh, a bunch of great stuff. It sounds like you like like a lot of us fanatics on on our ends. Like we just kind of kept all this Muppet stuff that we collected throughout the years thinking yeah i'm so uh, glad too like it in our house my husband has a kermit fro- oh t- actually two kermit phones mm-hmm. um and gosh a bunch of other stuff we just have it all through, throughout the house that's awesome uh so uh speaking of, of your love of sesame street um a few years ago uh you uh performed the theme song for the revival of shalom sesame um yeah what was that like being asked to to make such a huge contribution to to the sesame street universe well i felt like i i felt like i really needed to be true to sesame street i know sesame street has gotten especially through the 80s and early 90s it kind of was influenced by mtv and Mm -hmm. it got louder and kind of more jaggedy and like unusual camera angles like i like the old school i really like love the old school sesame street it's just quieter but it hits you harder, I feel like, because it's, it's like being in a quieter restaurant. You can actually hear the conversation as opposed to the newer sort of 80s and 90s Sesame Street, which is like eating in a loud restaurant. Right. Um, <laughs> so when I was asked to write the theme song for it, I really went back to the original, and I tried to get something that felt like the original Sesame Street theme song, and then I worked with them on the lyrics. They had ideas for what they needed it to say. So that was really, we were trying to really recapture, uh, you know, kind of a, a take on the original song. So I felt really happy to be a part of it it was really iconic and special for me um and at the same time i felt secretly um proud and also uh what's the word i just felt like i was i was keeping history alive you know by by making something that that was closer tied to the old sesame street yeah absolutely and and feeling you know and and, and arrangement and melody and everything actually yeah yeah for sure um and then uh a couple of years ago, oh, so I have to ask: Did you watch the most recent Muppet uh, TV show? The um, it was just called the Muppets, the uh, the Office style mockumentary. You know, I didn't get to see it. Uh, did you hear? Uh, there was an episode in which all the characters go to sing karaoke, and Janice sings your song "Stay." Yes, I know this because yeah. I, you know, I did see that part of that episode because I did approve that because I was like, yeah. Oh, you approved it beforehand. Stay. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, everything is approved when you see music and. Any kind of um, entertainment, it has been approved. Well, it's cool that it actually... I talk about it in my shows. I'm like, there was attorneys involved. There was contract. (laughs) Right. There was decisions on how many seconds they could use, uh, you know. How how did that feel, like, like, seeing Janice sing your song? It goes... It it just... It goes... It's just... It's hard to believe. Like, it's... In my life, I've been so lucky to you know, meet people who make some of the instruments I grew up playing, um, some of the clothing brands that I like. I just met somebody who's a Barbie designer. Like, to have to be to have my life intersect with the Muppets like that is just sort of beyond your wildest dreams. Like, it's, it's just unbelievable, really. Yeah. It's got to be surreal. I, it totally is surreal. as a fan. Yeah. And then just find they're a fan of yours, you know, in, in their own universe. That's, I think that's killer. Yeah, no, it's totally unbelievable. Um, and so now, so you've got this new album, Lullaby Girl, which is yeah. in stores, available right now. Everyone can go buy it or download it. Yeah, it's it's actually only available on Amazon. Oh, okay. So you can order a hard copy through Amazon. You can get it at my shows if you come see me. And you can listen to it streaming on Amazon Music. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can listen to it for free. Oh, there There's you go. There's also tons of videos available if you just want to watch the music we have videos available for almost all the songs on the record, and those are on YouTube, so you don't have to have Amazon for that part. Yes, and we'll... But you can watch, like, Rainbow Connection and other ones on YouTube. And we'll uh, we'll make sure we link to the uh, the Rainbow Connection uh, video as well right here on, on Tough Things. Oh, yeah. Um, so what made you choose Rainbow Connection uh, for this album? You know, it's funny. We had some input from the Amazon, so we worked with Amazon to make the record, they, um, they were like my record company. Mm-hmm. And so they had a couple of ideas. And for them, um, when we were talking about making, they wanted me to make a lullaby record. And I think they wanted me to make one that was more sort of for kids. But as I got into choosing songs, they had a couple of suggestions of songs that were very kid-oriented. 
you know, like, not Hickory Dickory Dock, but those kind of songs. Yeah. Um, I had already made a nursery rhymes record, and I think they wanted something that was like a companion piece for that. And instead, when we got into it, there were a couple songs on their list that they were recommending to us that people are interested in as lullabies, and one of those was Rainbow Connection. Hmm. And that, that was one of the reasons, I think, that we started going the direction that we did with picking a lot more classic songs from all the different eras. Because we started realizing, wait a minute, we could do The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow, and we could do In My Room by The Beach Boys, and we could do What the World Needs Now is Love, and songs that that we can arrange and create an album with a lot of variety and different feelings, but still all in the world of lullaby with a great jazz band, um, you know, playing things in a, in a tone that sort of calms you, but it's, again, sophisticated. And Rainbow Connection fit everything. You know, again, it was, it was how I see family-friendly records. It's a message that's beautiful. I'm friendly with Paul uh, Williams, who is the writer of the song. Um, we even performed it together once which is amazing. Oh, wow. But, um, you know, it, it just, it hit all of our marks. It, it had a nice theme. Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of about the future, about how things can be. Uh, you know, it puts you in that mindset. Um, and, and also, you know, you have lovers, the dreamers, which dreamers could mean literally nighttime dreaming or just people who have dreams. And it just puts you in that positive mindset where anything is possible. And I wanted that on the record. So it, kind of hit all of our marks and that's how the song ended up on the on the record and Larry Goldings who plays the piano on the record and all the keyboards he arranged the song and he did a really beautiful arrangement that's very melancholy um which the original is melancholy also um but I feel like it takes you even deeper and I, I really appreciated his approach uh, melodically and, and what he came up with it felt still true to the original but it was just a little bit different. Yeah, it's actually something I noticed as well about the uh, about the cover is um, Larry Golding's uh, piano replacing Kermit's banjo, and yeah. like that's such a, a you know when you say those words out loud, it's such a huge departure. Um, but I know at the same it's a time, little bit hard. It's funny. I actually have a, a Kermit. Uh, my husband does actually Kermit sitting on a log with a um, a banjo, a little statuette. But <laughs> it, it, I love the banjo, and it's funny. Banjos played a, a role on a lot of my records on. My last record, Feel What You Feel, Ed Helms from The Office actually plays oh. banjo on one of the songs. On another record I have, Steve Martin plays banjo. So it was kind of like, and you know, it was like, oh gosh, we should have a stringed instrument. But we were trying to make this record a little bit more piano oriented because I hadn't done that before. Sure. And um, so yeah, we, we didn't get that nice twangy kind of homegrown feeling from the banjo, but we did get a sort of sophisticated, melancholy, uh, it's a heartwarming version as well with the piano. Yeah, you you absolutely got, you nailed the uh, like the emotion of the song and I think the original feeling that Paul Williams was trying to to put out there into the universe, despite yeah, the fact he said that he liked it. He likes that oh, version, so that's what, what more can I ask for? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Once you get Paul Williams' blessing, that's that's everything. That's a cool. Uh, so then, also on the same album, um, you covered the song Inchworm, which actually has a yes. lot of um, Muppet connection as well. I don't know if you were aware. Uh, yeah, they had the video. Um, but what, is, what are all the... Are there more connections than I know? So there's a, there's a couple. So there's... Uh, it appeared... It's one of the few songs that appeared on The Muppet Show twice. Um, once uh, in the first, ep- uh, first season episode with Charles Aznavour, and then again later yeah. in the series with Danny Kaye. Um, oh, it, right. That's what I remember, the Danny Kay one, because sure. they had the little pup, the little tiny yes. inchworm. Yes, exactly. And then they also, um, what was one of the rare songs that was uh, performed both on The Muppet Show and on Sesame Street, which is interesting. Ah. Yeah. Maybe that's why I have such a connection. I thought it was just from watching the movie um, Hans Christian Andersen when I was a kid. Sure. And I always loved it. And it was funny, a lot of the musicians I was playing with, they didn't know the song, and especially they were freaking out during the part where the math problems um, <laughs> with the melody, two plus two, two and two are four, four and four are eight, eight and eight are 16, 16 and 16 are 32. They were freaking out when that part goes over the other part, and twirm, and twirm, I just made it too low. But they were like, this can't be right. I'm like, this is how it goes. Yeah. And to me, it's like, I, I know it like the back of my hand, it's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like it's really normal and average to me. But to them, they were like, oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> and these are like jazz musicians who play all kind of crazy stuff. So it was, it was very funny to see their reaction to that. 
Yeah, that's But again, fantastic. like that, that's like it, it hits all the marks. You know, it's a song that, in a way, I associate with my childhood because I watched all that stuff when I was a kid. But it's also sophisticated and it still tells a story that I think we all can, you know, appreciate and learn from. Absolutely, and and like you were saying before, um, you know about about uh, the Muppet Show, but also what you were saying about Rainbow Connection. All, all these things they work on so many different levels, um, and that's something yeah. And then you can as really... a grown up, like when you see it again, or you hear it again, or you see Kermit's face, or you you think of those things while listening to the music, it it is like a time machine. But it's not like you're trying to be a kid or something. You just feel part of you, you know, that you that's from another time it's it's like a time machine it's crazy absolutely uh so uh, i have to ask if you were going to um do another album that was uh, like this uh whether lullabies or something else just more covers um if you were to choose more another muppet song uh do you have another favorite that you would want to record yourself um yeah there's one that my husband and i have been talking about the um the kermit song uh you know up to you know, halfway down the stairs. That, oh that yeah, song. yeah. Uh, Robin, uh, Kermit's sense. nephew, Robin sings that one. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great song. That's a that lovely would be really song. Fun to do. I mean, that's the one that we keep talking about. But um, Gonzo song. You know. Yeah. Uh, we're going g- to come back there one day. I don't know what it's called exactly. Yeah. That song. I, I like all the melancholy ones. Although I do love. All the songs from the original Muppet movie. I don't know, um, but I do like the melancholy ones. Those are some great ones. Absolutely, they're just classics. They are classics, yeah. And again, Paul Williams. What do you think? Well, I think I think that that's a great idea. <laughs> but both of those songs are wonderful. Um, I would love to hear you guys. I would love to hear you do an entire Muppet cover album. <laughs> I think. Oh yeah. Let's 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 do That'd that. Really let's fun. get that done. That could be cool. That would be amazing. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm, pla- hmm. I'm planning I had a that seed. Record I was going to make, but. Yeah, let's think about that. All right. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is this is a, a bit of a silly question. So you you are well known for your iconic glasses, and I believe you have your own eyeglass company. Is that right, or your eyeglass brand? I do. I do have my own eyeglass uh, company called Lisa Loeb Eyewear, and it's at mom and pop stores all over the country as well as Costco. That's amazing. It's awesome at Costco for grown ups and for kids. Uh, so if you had to trade glasses with either Scooter or Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. Probably Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. <laughs> yeah? You would switch with him? Yeah. I would... Yeah, the, they're both a little too nerdy for, and small for my taste. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'd probably say Dr. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. I would actually really like to see him wearing your glasses. I think that would be more entertaining. <laughs> that would be cool. You know, Hello Kitty wore my glasses, but oh. I never had a Muppet wear my glasses. Miss Piggy would look good in them. Oh, yeah, she would, actually. I would love to see that. Yeah. So are Janice. There's not a lot of women Muppets. There's not. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, it just, it's, it's a very interesting issue. Yes, it um, is. But anyway. <laughs> uh, so if... Um, I still appreciate it. If you were asked to, um, uh, to be on, like, a, let's say there was a new Muppet show, something like that, uh, and you got kind of free reign to work with any of the Muppets, um, maybe sing a duet with one of them, who would you choose? I would like to work with Kermit. Mm-hmm. Although, it would be pretty funny to do a Miss Piggy thing, like a, uh, you know, one of those songs that has like a little rivalry in it. You oh, know? yeah. Like, I could do anything better than you can, like that kind of song. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, that would be really fun too, because that could be hilarious. That would with be. With Kermit, it would have to be like heartwarming. Or Fozzie Bear. Fozzie's always sweet. Oh, that would be sweet. I would like that. Yeah. Um, all right, so we, we can wrap this up in a minute, but I, I do want to ask before we before we do, um, you've obviously spent a lot of time working on Rainbow Connection, probably thinking about the lyrics a lot. What would you consider to be your own personal Rainbow Connection? Um, say, explain one more time. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> you've obviously thought about the song a lot in working on, yeah. on, your, on your cover for the album. And, you know, the Rainbow Connection is this, this thing that we've all been searching for, uh, you know, whether it's, um, you know, success or, uh, or yeah. happiness. What would you I would consider say yours? A sustainable, this sounds really like logistical, but like sustainable life flow. You know, where it's yeah. like, where work is fun, which it is, and it, and it always makes enough money to sustain a life with, you know, even small luxuries, you know, going on va- a couple of vacations, hanging out with the kids, where there's always enough time for sleeping and enjoying ourselves and working. 
and hanging out with each other and, you know, going to new places, exploring new places, returning to old places we love. That would be the best. Like, where, you, where it doesn't feel like the hustle and the bustle all the time. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and then last question, um, is there anything, any message you'd like to pass along uh, to all the, the Muppet lovers out there, the Muppet fans who love your work, uh, who will, uh, I'm sure, either already own your album or will soon go out and buy it? Well, definitely check out Lullaby Girl, but also check out Feel What You Feel, which has bread on the cover, um, like literally pieces of bread with faces, <laughs> um, very Muppety. And, and spread the word, you know, if you, if you like it, tell other pr- friends about it. I, I do get so many people who stop me in airports and all over the place and say, oh my God, I love your music. Have you been making any lately? And um, I think they're a big fan of my song from 25 years ago, which I really am super happy about. I don't have any problem with that at all. But it's like, take the extra step, you know, explore some of the newer stuff that's out there. It's easy to watch on YouTube. There's tons of videos. You know, it's all on Spotify or Amazon. So definitely check it out if you like it for the word. Great. Well, thank you again, Lisa, for joining us for this. This is really a treat. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, and, thank you. And thank you for uh, continuing to spread the word about, you know, love of the Muppets. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. I know I love the Muppets. Uh, they just make me so happy. Oh, good. Well, this interview made me very happy. So thank you oh, again. Good. Thank you. I really appreciate it.